Uh, Good Life Team, if you're new to hearing about Good Life Team and who we are and what we do, uh, we've been recognized as innovators in real estate and use of mobile technology. We're a business case study for Apple. We have, uh, we're also an, the Evernote ambassador to the real estate industry uh, because of our use and adoption of Evernote. We conduct regular trainings and provide a, a, a course on how to use the iPad to run your entire business. Uh, and Evernote is a core technology in our entire platform. So today we're going to be covering that. Michael, who is our Evernote expert and really, really has been on the Evernote bandwagon from very early uh, and has just mastered it, is going to be taking us through it. So last piece, if the audio is iffy and you dialed in, you can use the web audio. Some people have a better experience with that. If the web audio is iffy, you can change and dial in and you may have a better experience. It just depends on your internet connection or if your voice channel is better. And if you have a question right now, what I'd like you to do is go to the Paperless Agent Facebook page and comment on the post about this webinar. It should be the most recent post at the top of the page. Questions from the Facebook page first when we take questions throughout the hour. But with that, I'm going to turn this over to Michael. Uh, Michael, you're here with us. I am, Jack. Thank you so much for that kind introduction. Do I sound okay to everyone? Can you hear me okay, Jack? Yeah, you sound strong. You're good. Excellent. Um, well, uh, I'm really happy to be here, and as Jack said, you know, we're super passionate about technology in real estate, and we're uh, in particular passionate about Evernote. And as Jack already indicated, you know, some of the things that we've done here at Good Life Team and Coffee with Christina um, that evidence our commitment to these things, specifically technology and Evernote. He's already mentioned most of the things you're seeing on the screen now, but just to recap quickly, uh, in 2010, Good Life Team was named the most innovative bridge in North America by Inman News. USA Today did a feature on going paperless that included mention of the Good Life Team, and they, they referred to us as a brokerage gone paperless. In 2012, Good Life Team was named one of the best places to work in Austin. Uh, we're super proud of our relationship with Apple. In fact, they featured us in a couple of different videos. As Jack already mentioned, I just co-authored this Wanapool Technology Report and wrote the chapter on Evernote. And then also Christina Wise, our CEO, is an Evernote ambassador to the real estate industry, meaning that Evernote specifically recognized her for her work with Evernote. And the thing we're probably most proud of is the fact that we're mentioned as a business case study on Apple.com. And this is a direct quote from the site. In fact, you can go to Apple.com right now and search Good Life Team, and you'll see a page that includes this exact same information. But their catch line for us is real, real estate, real results with iPad. And why that matters here and now in this webinar regarding Evernote is because Evernote is a huge part of the stuff that we do using the iPad um, in real estate. So what are we going to do today? Uh, first of all, I want to make clear that we can't possibly cover everything there is to cover regarding Evernote in real estate in 30 minutes. And today's format is 30 minutes of teaching followed by 30 minutes of Q&A because we, we know that we're going to have a wide range of expertise um, in terms of you listeners. Many people are very familiar with Evernote. Many people have never used it. And we want to be available to answer questions from that full spectrum. But the objective of today's webinar is a quick overview of Evernote, key definitions, a few key terms that you need to know to understand Evernote, why we think you should use Evernote, five different ways to create notes, which are the fundamental building blocks of everything in Evernote, how to create notebooks, how to share notes, working with templates, eight notebook stacks you need to understand to build your real estate business digitally, and then again, that 30 minutes of Q&A. So let's start with our overview of Evernote. What is it? Evernote is a free cloud-based note-taking and organizational tool. It is also the digital epicenter of my life, personally. I use it every day, all day long. Right now, I probably have eight different notes open on the various monitors I have in front of me. At the Good Life team, we use it as the, as the core of everything that we do working as a team. It's also my favorite technology, not named or made by Apple, because I'm a huge Apple fan. And it's also the backbone of Paperless Agent, which is a book that we've created to create uh, and market digital products for the real estate industry and beyond. So what are the key definitions? 
there are really just three things that you need to understand to better grasp what I'm going to share with you today, and they are these three things you see on the screen in front of you. Notes, I already mentioned, are the most basic element of Evernote, and examples of notes you might create, and I'm going to show you how to do this in just a second, uh, are PDFs, reports, documents, photos, recordings, scan documents, hand type notes, etc. Notebook are the digital equivalent of like a manila folder in real life. Notebooks contain collections of notes. So you create notes and you place them in notebooks. And then only notebook stacks are basically collections of notebooks. So you create notes, you put notebooks, and you, if you want, you can put those notebooks in stacks of notebooks. So why use Evernote? There are so many reasons I could share with you, and I tried to look to just these four that you see, but basically it's because it's cloud-based. That allows you to access everything that you create on Evernote from anywhere. Many times I have uh, written a blog post in a parking lot or added to a grocery list while in my car, or I mean the list goes on and on, and it's just amazing to be able to access all of this digital information from anywhere. Also, for I would save this stat up, so I want to be clear about that, but I would, I would honestly estimate that 98% of all users will be fine with the free version of Evernote, so you'll never have to pay anything for it. And for those of you who are power users, the premium version of Evernote only costs $45 per year. I pay for their premium membership. I want to pay these people just because they've created such an amazing product. I think it's worth dramatically more than that. But worst case scenario is you're paying 45 bucks a year. It is amazingly organizational. Because of the way it's structured, the, the, the basic uh, concept behind the way they designed this is pure genius and the fact that everything is keyword searchable and taggable and it even includes OCR, optical character recognition. So I have many times searched and found handwritten notes that I've taken that I've scanned into Evernote and that's pretty magical. And finally, it's just awesome. It really is. It, it can become your digital Swiss army knife, which is what it's done for me. And I want to also make a comment here, which is when I first tried Evernote, I really didn't get it. And I picked it up, tried it for like a week or two. Didn't, it didn't mesh with me somehow. I set it down and touched it for probably six months. Then I read an, a blog post from Chris Brogan, and I think many of you will know who Chris Brogan is. But it compelled me to go back and look at it again, which I did. And since then, I have just you know, I've fallen in love with it. And like I said, I use it every single day. So now let's get into what we're really here to do today, which is to learn about Evernote. We're going to start from what I think is truly square one, uh, step one, which is how to create notes. And the five main ways that you can create notes in Evernote are as follows. Basic note creation from the Evernote navigation menu, audio notes, drag and drop notes, emailing into Evernote, and using something called the Web Clipper. So now we're going to transition over, and we're looking at one of my Evernote profiles. And uh, before we dive into the note creation, let me just give you a couple of quick comments regarding uh, navigation. This black column that you see on the left includes a number of things we're not going to cover today. And also I want to mention that we're going to be doing these Evernote trainings every month going forward. So we, we recognize we can't cover everything at once, and we're going to come back and cover things next time that we're not covering today. So just focus in on two things right now with me, which are these two rooms called Notes, which I'm clicking on, and Notebooks. You see how the view changes. Here we're looking at the Notes. Here we're looking at the Notebooks. Again, the folders that are the containers of Notes. So we'll go back to Notes, and I want to show you again the most basic way to create a note. Top line navigation, we have these commands. I'm not going to go through all of them right now. I'm going to focus on this one which is called File. Click on File, and the first option is New. I click on that, and this new blank pane appears on the right. You see it here. It says Untitled Note. The first thing I always do is title my note. So I'll, I'll just title this as Test for Evernote. And when I click down in the body of the note, you see how this menu item appeared right here uh, where I'm moving my cursor. And you have a series of options dealing with different things you can do inside of a note. If you start typing, let's just start typing. You see we have font, we have font size, 
we have font color, we have bolding, italicizing, underlining, justification left, middle, and right. We also have bullet lists, which I use all the time. So you just click that bullet and start typing, and you have a bullet list, a bullet. Another thing you can do is create a numerical list like that by clicking that numerical list avatar icon right there. One of my favorite uses of Evernote is a checklist creation, which they call it to do. So if you click that, you'll see this box pops open, this little checkbox. And I can check and uncheck that. That's really great if you're preparing a list of things, like a, a workflow with it, a real estate transact, for example. Another thing we can do is create tables. I'm not going to talk about that today. Another small little thing that doesn't seem like it would matter much, but I use constantly, is this insert horizontal rule. You click that, and you get a bar that goes the width of the note. I love to do this and use this to separate thoughts inside of a note so that the way my brain works, having those lines helps for some reason. And then one of my favorite uses of Evernote is this video feature where it says record audio. Watch what happens when I click on this. So this new bar pops up, which has the record button. You also see this bar modulating. This is hearing my voice. It's just a voice meter of some variety. So you can click this record button, as I'm, I'm going to do in just a second, and it will record my voice. So this is just a test for Coffee with Christina and Good Life Team training for Evernote. Let's see what happens here. So I click Save. And you'll notice this wave file pops up right here where my cursor is. And I don't know if you're going to be able to hear this or not, but when I click this play button, it's going to play back for you what I just recorded. So again, I don't know if you heard that or not, but it played back and recorded. What I love about this feature is if you're sending something to a client, a perfect example would be, Let's say you get an inspection report following an inspection for a officer, and you're forwarding that inspection report to your client, and you have a number of comments that you want to make to them about what you observed in the inspection report. Rather than write a lengthy email, you can just sit and dictate and record your own voice. And I think it's, it's, a, it's a way to separate yourselves from what most people do. It adds a real personal touch. It adds a heightened level of professionalism and customer service experience. And if you give this a try, I think you'll end up using it a lot because it's just super cool. Every time I've used this client, they've commented on it and said, wow, how did you do that? That's so cool. So is audio note creation. I also want to mention that if you're using a mobile device like an iPhone or an iPad, you can create a note starting with that audio command, which you can't really do from the desktop version per se. Um, OK, the next option you have here is to take a snapshot. Uh, this isn't really very useful on a, on a computer, on a desktop or a laptop computer like I'm working on right now. But on an iPad or an iPhone, it's really useful because you can take photos uh, more you know, logically holding a small device. And you can insert them wherever you want inside of a note. I'm going to show you an illustration of that before this webinar is over. And then another thing you can do is simply attach something to a note. Just click on this paperclip icon. And I'm just going to randomly grab something. There's a cool photo of some of my best friends who I saw in San Francisco at In the Neck last week. And, and that, that uh, attachment just appears right there in that note as you see it. So it's that simple. So what we just covered was basic note creation using basically just typing, and then also audio notes. So now I want to show you something else, another of my favorite techniques. And this is drag and drop. Now, I use a Mac. And uh, if you're familiar with a Mac, you have something called a dock. That's this strip, which I have on the left side of my computer. You can put it wherever you want. I have it on the left side. And this shows all of the software that's either open or I predetermined that I want it to be located here. You'll see that one of those software items, one of those icons, is Evernote, as I'm highlighting right now. I can drag and drop anything onto that icon and instantly create a note. Now watch me do it. I'm just going to grab something from my desktop, drag it over, 
drop it on top of the Evernote icon, and it instantly created that note. I think that's kind of magical. And where this is helpful is uh, you receive an email from someone that includes a PDF attachment, for example, and you can just drag it right out of the email and right into your doc or on top of that icon and instantly create a note. And there's that note again that I just pulled in. As you'll notice in this notes view, uh, I didn't mention this earlier, this middle column or the column I'm scrolling up and down right now is a little what they call a snippet view of the notes that I have. And if I click on any one of those notes, it shows you the note over here in the right pane. So here's the one I just created that includes the photo of my friends from San Francisco. Here's the one I just created using the drag and drop. So there's another technique to create notes, drag and drop. Another cool feature that we have is emailing. When you sign up for Evernote, they assign you an Evernote-specific email address. And whenever you send anything into that Evernote-specific email address, it creates a note. So here's a perfect example of where you might want to do that. Uh, my good friend and co-worker, Oscar Davila, our social media director at Good Life Team, sent me this email earlier today. We're putting some stuff together for a variety of products that we're creating, and we needed some really cool high-resolution photos of iPads being used in the field. So he sends me this email that includes these four photos. I want to see this stuff, and all I need to do to save it in Evernote is to go into my Gmail, click Forward, and I'm going to type in my Evernote email address, which of course auto-populates because I use it all the time. I click Send. This is going to send that entire email into Evernote. I can get back and find where it went. Now, you haven't seen it here yet because it's sent into the cloud, and I now have to pull it down out of the cloud onto my desktop version. And how I do that is by clicking this sync button right here. You see the, the circular arrows? I click this. Now watch the lower left corner of my screen. See how it says syncing? It's going into the cloud. It's grabbing that thing that I sent into Evernote. And it's taking longer than normal. Here we go, downloading. It's taking longer than normal because of those photos. But then I click on that, and you see here is that email that I sent into my Evernote account, and here are those beautiful photos. So I think you can imagine in your real estate endeavors how often you receive some via email that you absolutely want to keep track of. And what I do is just send it into Evernote because now I've got access to it from everywhere. Now the last thing I want to show you in terms of note creation is something called the Web Clipper. Bear with me as I navigate to that. So if you go to Evernote dot com slash web clipper slash as you see here at the top of my screen evernote dot com slash web clipper slash you can download this thing called the web clipper and as I hover here over this down arrow you see that you can get this uh, it's a browser extension for Chrome Safari Firefox Opera or Internet Explorer and if you just click on whichever one of these applies to you it will automatically create this web clipper functionality within your browser. You see it here now for me on Safari, which is what I'm using, where I'm pointing right now, you see the little elephant head up here, it says clip to Evernote. What, what happens to clip this or when I press this is it's going to capture whatever I'm looking at on my browser. So I'm going to do that right now. So I click that button and this, this uh, uh, dialog box pops open and it's asking me if I want to save the article or the full page or just the URL. So it's giving me options on exactly what do I want to keep from this page. I typically keep the full page. I don't know why, I just do. I can add tags if I want. I can add comments. I can choose which notebook this is in. And I'm just going to go ahead and click Save Full Page. So just like that, it has created a note, which again, I'll sync my notes. It's downloading, it's syncing, and boom, right there you see 
I have created a note for that entire web page. This is great. In fact, I use this instead of bookmarks now. So in the past, I would use bookmarks to just keep track of websites. I now use the Web Clipper. So that's how the Web Clipper works. So to recount, what we've covered so far in terms of note creation is basic note creation, basic typing, audio note creation, drag and drop note creation, emailing into Evernote using the Web Clipper. Now we're going to talk very briefly about notebooks. And just so you understand, in future trainings, we're going to cover notebooks in a lot more detail than I'm going to cover right now, again, because of our time constraints that we have today. Right now, what I just want to show you is how you should set up your, uh, your notebooks to service real estate business. And there are really eight notebook stacks that you need to create. And let me point out first that wherever you see a white rectangle like this, or this, or this, or this, those are notebook stacks. That means the collection of notebooks. Wherever you see a gray rectangle, like Joe Smith, or Karen Johnson, or John Keller, or John Carroll, and Jacker, um, those are individual notebooks. So uh, that's a distinction that you need to grasp uh, right away, is notebooks versus notebook stacks. So the eight notebook stacks that you need for your real estate business are the, the ones you see right now. Prospects, buyers, sellers, <clears throat> um, closed sales, templates, inactive clients, and archive sales. So you could imagine as you run your real estate business how this will work is that people start as prospects, you move them into buyers or sellers, hopefully they become pending sales, hopefully they become closed sales. And as you get clients, you create notebooks for them. And how you do that is this symbol. You go up into right here, upper left corner, where it says New Notebook. You click that and you just type in the name of your client. So let's just go with Lisa uh, Smithers. So I create that. The notebooks are automatically alphabetized. You see Lisa Smithers here. And I'm just going to drag her over into the prospects stack. And there she is. So it's that simple to create a notebook. And again, understand that you're not going to understand all this right now. But um, um, this is the way the workflow begins. And so she moves from prospect into buyer or seller, etc. <clears throat> so now let's give an example of working with a template. Now a template, just so you understand, is one of the things that makes this whole process kind of magical. It's one of the things that makes using Evernote a worthwhile endeavor, in my opinion. Notice that we have this category here called templates. I click on that and you see we have five templates here. Buyer tour, listing appointment, client consultation, MLS seller template, and contract to close. The idea with a template is to document an entire workflow. And in fact what we're looking at right here is a good example of that. Let's look more closely at that contract to close. So we have step one, verify contract documents, track receipt of final documents, and ensure placement in Cardivy. And there's this whole list of things that agents at the Good Life team do. Step two is similar, step three, et cetera. So the idea is you create this workflow, and then whenever you need it, you come and grab it, copy and paste it, and attach it to a client. So let's do that right now so I can show you how easy this is. So let's assume we have a client who uh, has successfully offered on a property, everything's set, and now we're just going from contract to close. We just go to this template called the contract to close. We grab the contents of the note, as you see me doing now. I'm going to copy. I'm going to go back into our notebooks view. And I'm going to, let's assume that this was Karen Johnson who just bought this property successfully, and now it's contract to close for her. 
go into her notebook, and you'll notice at the top we have this option of adding a new note in the notebook called Karen Johnson, which is exactly what we want to do. So I click on that, I go into the body of that new note, and I simply paste. And right there, I have this entire fresh note that includes that workflow of contract to close for Karen Johnson. So because I'm uh, really uh, anal about titling things, I'm going to title this Karen Johnson contract contract to close. And now I've got that, in, which I can use to manage the process of Karen Johnson's contract to close. So you get the idea as to how these templates work. And over time, uh, what you'll find, and this is what's happened with Agents of the Good Team, is you just, you just keep adding to these templates, coming up with new ones, improving that you have, tweaking, editing, tweaking, editing, so that you know over the course of like, the next six months to a year, you end up with an incredibly precise collection of templates that you can just go grab, copy, paste, and use, and all of this is being without paper, and all of it is accessible from anywhere. So that's how it works. Now, we're getting close to the end of our 30 minutes here, believe it or not. This has been a blur, but I, I, we can't stop until I show you this next thing, which is sharing notes. So we have this note right here, a buyer tour note. drag it back onto the right screen here. So here's a note that we have for a buyer tour. And we've, we've populated this note with an example of how a buyer tour might be conducted in real life using a template and using Evernote on an iPad, for example. So we have all the properties in order that we're showing, the address, the time of the showing, the listing agent, their phone number. And here's where the magic happens with this particular template is you see the notes we have here. So the agent would be carrying their iPad and either talking or typing in notes as they go along looking at the homes. Also remember that I told you you could take pictures and place them inside of notes. So that agent stood in this space, clicked that camera icon that I'm pointing at right now, took a photo, and it just appeared right here inside this note. So the idea is we complete the buyer tour template as we complete a buyer tour, and at the end of it, we share it with the client. So how we do that is we go up and you see this blue arrow share button. We have five different options for sharing. We have post to Facebook, to Twitter, and post to LinkedIn. Obviously, we're not going to be posting client stuff to Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. However, we certainly can email things, and we can also do that last option, which I'll show you in a second. Email works exactly as easily as you would think it would. I press the email button, and in a second here, we're going to a dialog box that's going to pop open. I don't know why it's taking so long. My computer is being stressed here, it appears. In any event, a dialog box pops up, which you just literally type in the person's email address and click send. It's that simple. And they receive exactly the contents of the note. Oh, I'm sorry, here's the reason why it's on my other screen. Let me drag it back over. So this is what it looks like. And I just type in, in fact, let's do this real fast. We click send, and there you go. It's out, the, it's out the door, and your client will get it, receive it, open it, and it will include all of this stuff, the photos, the voice notes, everything. So now let's quickly cover the last way we can share a note. This is my favorite way just because it's so cool. We click this copy share URL to clipboard. Click it. OK, it was that fast. It created a link. I'm now going to show you how that works. So all I need to do is paste the link in that it just created. Now watch this. It created a web page out of that note. You see this? It's got the voice note. It has the photos. It is a web page 
that includes the totality of that note. This is really great if you want to create something unique and special that doesn't really go on a website, and I'm, I'm sort of deviating away from normal real estate stuff, but as an example, I created a list of the top 300 people that I think you should follow on Twitter in real estate, and I created that in Evernote, and then I just simply created this URL, put it out on the web, and shared it with people, and it kind of went viral. And part of the reason that I think it did was because this technology is just so cool that you can share stuff with the URL exactly as I've shown you. So um, I think we've we've hit our 30 minutes now, and I don't want to I don't want to cut our Q and A short because again we want to cover as many questions as we can. And um, also I want to remind you that we will be coming back and doing these trainings every month, so we'll be covering a lot of the stuff that we weren't able to cover here today. So. With that said, let's go back. Also, let me repeat one more time the eight notebooks that you need to create for your real estate business. Here they are quickly. If you want to jot them down. Prospects, buyers, sellers, pending sales, closed sales, inactive clients, archive sales, and templates. So in case you want to jot that down. And also, if you want to learn more, we have a product called Paperless Agent, um, which is really takes what I just shared with you and add a whole lot of other stuff to it, you can check that out at thepaperlessagent.com. But with that said, Jack, I want to bring you back on. Are you with us? Jack? Hey Michael, I'm back hey. on. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. Thought we lost you. No, I'm right here. All right, cool, man. So let's cover some questions. Well, we have a ton of questions, and uh, first of all, I want to say I'm the moron today, and that I'm going to be here to help everybody on this call make sure that they get the most out of it as possible. So we're going to stick around and answer a bunch of questions for you and elevate the level of everybody on the call. So the um, first question I think that, that came up, Michael, is a lot of people were confused about what you were showing in terms of desktop, web, and uh, the iPad version. Can you talk about the differences between the versions and how those work together? Well, um, the differences between the web version and the desktop version are, are uh, kind of minor, actually. The, the the web version is a little bit less functionality. And what I found, and, and actually you and I have never discussed this, so I don't know what you think, but I use the desktop version almost exclusively, except when I can't. So when I'm on, an, on my iPhone or iPad, of course, I use those, those, um, those tools. Um, but there's less functionality on the web version. Can you answer that question? Because to be honest with you, I don't know that I can answer it very intelligently because I just don't use the mobile versions as much. Yeah. Well, let me, yeah, I'll talk about it a little bit. So the, the major difference is Evernote's philosophy as a company is that they want to build the best possible interface, meaning the user interface, for whatever platform you're on. So if you're on a touch platform like a tablet or a phone that uses a touch screen versus if you're on a desktop, they're going to build it so it works the best in that environment. And so they've built clients, a desktop client, an iPad client, an iPhone client, an Android client, a PC client, a Mac client. So you have all these different pieces of software that are all called Evernote, but they've tailored each one for the on so that it runs really, really well. Now, primarily what Michael's been showing today has been the desktop, ver desktop Mac version of Evernote, which... Um, you know, if you're on the Mac and you use it all the time, this is what you would be using. There are some differences in what is on the screen and what is, what you're going to experience, and there are some a few functional differences. There's some things that you can't do, like you can't record an audio note when you're logged into the version you get through the web. the um, The other thing I'll say is the version on the web is really convenient because you can go to any computer. Evernote doesn't have to be installed. You can log on to Evernote.com, and you can get to everything no matter where you are. And I've used that myself many times when I've been in a hotel and haven't had a laptop or a computer with me, and I just needed to get to something. So that's the major, those are the major differences between the, the different platforms. The second question we got a bunch was, 
you know, how does how do these versions, does all this stuff sync together? And the short answer is yes. If you put it in one version, if you put it on your iPad version, it'll sync over your PC or your Mac version, and you can get to it there. So that's that's a big that's that's a big major feature of Evernote. Um, yeah, and and like you, I've done the same thing, Jack. Where I've been uh, remote and just having access to the web in any variety, being able to log in and get stuff, um, especially to answer questions. Like as an example, one thing that I think is really valuable for a real estate practitioner is to have access to all of their, for example, listing information because it's it's Murphy's law how often this has happened to me as an agent where I'm out on the road, I'm in some inconvenient location, it calls with an urgent question about a listing that I have, for example. And many details I don't have committed to memory. You know, people ask crazy questions. And being able to, for example, go into a notebook full of PDFs of all of my listings to have access to all of the details that I would need to know to answer every question, super convenient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that access is just cool. Yeah, the access is really cool. It's a major benefit. Um, another one, this, this we had several people ask about with regard to the templates. Um, and I just want to pre-answer the question that we're going to have to answer real quickly after Michael shows what we're going to show is, um, we have some templates that we provide as part of our iPad training, and so people that purchase the iPad training get access to the templates. So the ones that we showed today, we're not; those are those are part of an education program. And if you want to learn more about that, we're going to do a webinar about that next week. Some of you attended one yesterday. So um, people that ask on these templates, how do I quickly? So say I've got a template. Um, how can I quickly take the template and then make a new note out of it so that I can just fill it in? What's the fastest way to do that? Because people that are already have those templates want to know how to how to make that happen. Um, how to how to basically effectively use the templates? Yeah, how I mean, to is use that, is that an essence of the question? Yeah, so if, so if I've got a template, how do I use it? Oh, how you use it is well, I, I attempted to demonstrate that, and I apologize if it wasn't clear. But the idea is. You create the templates over time. You know whether you you start with the ones that we provide to those who buy our products. Um, and you just edit them over time to make them fit exactly whatever it is that your workflow is. The one that I demonstrated was contract to close. I, I showed that one on purpose because it has the most steps. Like I've yeah. got my own check that I've been using for years as an agent that I morphed over into Evernote. And so you create the template in a template note. You then go into that note and copy and paste that body of information into a new note for a given client. So you're always leaving that original templated note, you know, pure and clean, so you can be using it. And that's where you do the editing is in that template, so that the next time you use it, it's the current version. But it's a simple process of creating the template, editing it, and making it better over time, and then simply copying it and pasting it into new notes that you create for specific clients on an as-needed basis. That's basically the way it works. Actually, there's there's a really cool new feature that they've added. Can you right-click on any one of those templates and let's see if your version has it? Yeah, it should, you should get a menu. Yeah, so here you see that where it says move to notebook? Yep. So this is what I use. So if you go copy to notebook, just copy it to one of your notebooks. Do the second one. Just copy it into yep. one of your, like Joe Smith, so what that does yep. is that takes that template note and just copies it to that notebook, and then you can just go edit it. And I think that was the question people were asking. They're kind of like, oh, I've got this. Is there a better way than cutting and pasting? And that's that's what gotcha. I do. I think that was gotcha. a twofer because we had a question about um, how, do I, how do I move notes between notebooks, and that's exactly how you do it the same way. So if you right-click on a note, and this is on the Mac or PC version, it works the same Which on notebook. Both. Book, and that lets you move things around from notebook to notebook uh, as you need to, and so that that's a yep. pretty handy that's a pretty handy feature. So yeah, that um, absolutely is. So real quick, yeah, it's funny. Be, it's funny. Be, it's funny because what I just showed you is how long I've been using Evernote and gotten used to it that I didn't even know about that. I really didn't even know those tricks. <laughs> yeah, they added that. I always learn. Yeah, well, exactly. About I guess about 90 days ago, where I noticed that showed up, and that immediately changed how I started using Evernote. So um, the last part here that relate well that I see that came up early in the call was 
Can you talk a little bit more? You say power user for the premium version. When do people? When should people be paying for the premium version? Like, what's the? When do people upgrade to the paid version? Ever? Why would they do that? Um, well. First of all, they, uh, there's a page you can find on Evernote.com, and in fact, I should navigate to it here in a second and show you. And while I'm doing that, I'll attempt to I'll, I'll attempt to multitask, Jack, which I really am not good at. But basically, the simplest answer to that question, in my opinion, is when you have to, when you're forced to. Uh, bear with me as I find this. Mm -hmm. When you're forced to move by virtue of probably hitting your storage limitation, that's what yeah. it's going to be for most people. I mean, that's you know, I'm gonna, true. I'm gonna, I'm why am I not finding thing. this? Oh, it's uh, under at the bottom, premium for individuals. It talks about for individuals and for businesses down in the navigation at the bottom. You see under support. Yeah, so they it's it's what's called the premium version. The other reason I found this really great, I mean, this so we are here's premium. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and and here, on it. It, yeah, it's forty five dollars for a year, for the year, and you get these these features, which in my opinion, um, are not the main reason for making that decision. In my opinion, the main reason is just storage, because once you hit your limit, if you hit your limit, that means you've been really using Evernote, and you've probably fallen in love with it, and you probably can't live without it. I mean, because yeah. otherwise you'll never hit the limit. So once you get yeah. to that point, that's going to tell you, I'm sorry, you can't upload anymore this month. There's a monthly limit, and you'll just okay, cool. I'll pay my 45 bucks and be happy about it. At least that's what I did. Got it. Well, the the other reason I'd say that is probably worthwhile, especially if you're a new user, or so that you're going to want a little bit of extra help, is um, they 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 will support you if you are a premium version, meaning you can email in questions. And they've walked me through. I've had some syncing problems. I had problems syncing some files. I've got a lot of files, or I've got a lot of notes in my Evernote. And I had some problems syncing. And their support team was great. They were very responsive. And so they do active support if you're uh, is worth the 45 bucks a year, in my opinion, especially if you're if you are new to Evernote and you want to make this work and you want to make sure you've got some help to do that. Uh, that's a really good good uh, benefit. Um, okay, so next Excellent question point. I got. Yeah, I, I, I just think I like uh, support is good. <laughs> uh, talk a little bit about Skitch and kind of how Skitch and Evernote work together and, you know, um, there was some confusion about how those two things um, play together. And, and even just, you know, what is Sketch exactly? Just kind of fundamental. Okay, hang on. I'm opening it right now, and i got to drag it back onto my small screen so you can see it. Yep. Uh, that's the problem with using this arena I'm using is that it's... All right. So here we have Sketch. Can you see it? Yep. Okay. So Sketch is great because it's um, I mean, it does a number of things, but it, I use it primarily as a screen cap tool. So how it works is you click this menu item up top center. It says screen cap, and you see the crosshairs. I can then, if I want to, I want to summarize this new presentation of Evernote's premium features, which the old version looked much nicer than this, in my opinion. But in any event, so I'm going to capture that. And it's going to create this window you see here. Now, what saves it into Evernote is if I go up here and click on this Evernote, where you see it right here up top. Now, it flipped around and showed me all of my most recent screen captures. Here's a cool one I made yesterday of you, Jack. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> That's great. Uh, so, That's great. So, so it automatically is saving this into my Evernote. And if I were to toggle into Evernote, you would see what I just created here uh, in terms of that screen capture. So, and this is different because the way it used to work, the way Sketch used to work was was independent of Evernote. Then Evernote acquired Sketch, and they went through some changes. And just recently, they've ended up in this situation you see now. Another thing you can do with Sketch is you can annotate. So if I click this letter, I can just start. <laughs> This is useful. You can also change fonts, etc. Change font color, uh, change the size of your marker, etc. Um, and so it's a it's a great screen capture annotation and automatically store in Evernote tool. And it has more functionality than that, 
but that's what I use it for the vast majority of the time. Yeah, the, the thing I love about Sketch as a realtor is um, you can screen capture anything that you want to bring bring your client's attention to and send it to them. So if you want to mark up, you know, an, a, a map of properties in the MLS, you can mark it up. If you want to, if you want to mark up, a, you know, do some quick markup on a document to explain something to a client, it's really great for that. And because it's it's a visual form of communication, there's a, you know, about thirty to forty percent of the world, you know, really operates much better if you communicate visually as their primary communication as opposed to writing out a bunch of text that they have to read or audio. Um, so it's a very powerful communication tool. I also use it a ton to communicate with people that do creative work for our company. So if you are working with a graphics designer who's doing web design for your real estate website, or if you're working with a person doing postcards, or heck, I've even used it to communicate with customer service people. I, you know, if there's tools that you use on the web and something's not working right or you don't understand something, I'll just take a screen capture of it and draw on it and then send them a link to that screen capture. And then that way they understand that, A, number one, I'm not crazy, there really is a problem. And B, they can help me because they know what screen I'm looking at when I'm saying something. It's a very I agree with all that. Tool. Yeah, and also I want to add a couple things to what you just said, Jack. One is I'm showing you the sharing options from inside of yeah. Sketch. You see it up here. So you can email, you can message, you can put it on Twitter, Facebook. You can set as your desktop picture, and you can also add to iPhoto, which is pretty cool. You can also share and copy a shared URL, which is exactly the same as what I showed at the end of my presentation, where you're creating a, a unique web page of whatever's in your sketch here, which is really cool. And more importantly, um, to amplify what you just said, Jack, I have really learned a big lesson over the course of the last year. And you and I had this conversation today, believe it or not. Uh, but it is the power of photos versus world, who is the, the creative genius behind Corcoran Group, which is one of the best uh, real estate brands in America, particularly when it comes to their digital work, the stuff they do on Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus and on their website and all that. And um, I made a whole bunch of video of him in New York last year, about an hour's worth of just me recording him talking. And I still haven't published it yet because I've been that busy for the last year. But the one thing I took from what all he said to me was the most powerful responses they get online are to photos, not words and not this photos. Does that, does intuitively that make sense to you? Oh, of course. I mean, it, it's it's just it's like what I just said that there's a there's a big chunk of the world where a picture. I mean, a picture tells a thousand words anyway. And then there's a big chunk of the world that would just prefer to be communicated with in a visual fashion. I mean, we've moved to that for the web. Generally, you see a lot more photography, a lot more images that communicate more information because our our brains are really wired to pick that information up very quickly. So I I, I think it's a more. I joked yesterday that. You know, there's a couple of people in our company that I primarily communicate with them with screenshots and markup, and that's absolutely true. And it's because of what what's work what works best for them is to send them a screenshot that shows them the answer to what they're looking for instead of trying to explain it, which you can spend all this time writing a paragraph to explain something, <laughs> or you can just screen capture and draw on it, and then people get it instantly. So I think it's just yeah. more, I think just as a tool, it's way more effective, um, a ton more effective. So, um, oh, quick, what's our next question? A couple people, couple people asked, uh, is it easy to print from Evernote? Yes. Yes. <laughs> the short answer is yes. Uh, that's it's it. just it's it. like everything, it's, it's like everything else. It's literally file print. I mean, it, it prints just like everything else does. Uh, this one, so there's a little bit about client communication, how to send a note to a client, how to send a, you know, anything that we want to a client. What's the, I think you demonstrated that. Could you show that again? Because a couple of people are asking about that. Sure. So uh, it all starts blue share arrow in the upper right corner of a given note. So you click on that, and there are the options that you have. There's the email option, and all you do is click email. And a dialog box pops open, which again is on my other screen, which I got a driver. 
but it looks like this. <clears throat> and all you do is fill in the email address and click send. And also, you notice you have this um, CC me on this message box option that is that the default is for this to be checked. In other words, every time you send something out using email out of Evernote, it automatically sends to you unless you disenable that check. I always leave it checked. I always want to have a record of what I sent out to my clients on from Evernote, but that's how it works. And what you get on the other end when you read one of these is it looks just like the note does. Mm -hmm. And it's that simple. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just like sending an email. Yeah, it's just like sending an email. It's intended to be that easy. Um, so that's that's great. Um, how do I get my Evernote email address? I, I have a, I know I can email into Evernote. Can you show us how to get that if, if I'm using Evernote already? Yes. Uh, if we go up into Evernote account info, okay, once again, it opens over there. You get this. Um, you get this information, and you'll see right here where my cursor is. It just assigns it to you. You don't. I don't think you have any control over what it is. Uh, at least I've not researched that. But there yep. it is. And, and all, all you need to do is, you know, copy, copy it, paste it into your address book. And once you've used it one time, if your email client works like every email client I know, um, it'll auto-populate. So you just start. I just start typing G O D in my case, and it auto-populates and just click send, and there it is right in your Evernote. Mm -hmm. So that was just I, Evernote account info. Yep. And it's going to be a little different if you're on the PC, but it will be under wherever the rest of the account information is. So we're, we're on the Mac version right now. If you're on a PC, it'll look slightly different. But just look for the account information um, part on the PC, and you'll be able to find it there. So. Um, let me see what our next question is. Is it possible to have, so this is, this is a sophisticated question. So um, if you have, how do you work with multiple users? So if you've got multiple people using Evernote, can you talk to us a little bit about, and I can talk to you about that a little bit too, Michael, because we've done, we've done a fair amount of that at, at Good Life Team. Yeah, in fact, you've, you've done a ton of, in fact, you're probably a better position to answer that question than I am, but I'll go ahead and start, and you can, you can fill in blanks that I'm undoubtedly going to lead. Or lead. Sure. But basi basically, you can share notes or notebooks. So if you go into a notebook, you'll see this, um, I just click that share arrow, and we can invite people into this notebook. So I can, if I wanted to share this notebook with my assistant or with Jack Miller or whomever, I can just type in their uh, email address. And then I can also manage permissions right here. I can either limit them to viewing the note, or they can view notes and activity. They can modify notes, or the ultimate permission is to modify, and they can invite others. So as I mentioned very early in this call, at Good Life Team, we really do run our business out of uh, Evernote. I mean, it is the core of everything we do. We're constantly creating notes and sharing them. We're creating notebooks and sharing them. We're updating, and one of the cool things about the way Evernote works is when somebody updates something, a little notification of that, it just flashes by on your screen. Also, when you go back into your notes list, if you sort your notes by date modified, which is what I think most would not naturally do, you're always aware of what's changed because the notes will be near the top of your list. So what would you add to that, Jack? Well, I, I would just say, you know, we, since we work as a team, a Good Life team, we've done a lot with this. And um, this functionality uh, just really shines as a way to have a collaborative set of, you know, notes together. And, uh, but I think the fun you've nailed the functionality in terms of, of what it can do. We're now experimenting with the business version of Evernote, which they, they have, you know, you have your free version. You have your individual premium version, which allows you to do. In my opinion, I think as a as a realtor, you can you can do pretty much everything you need to do, plus get support on the premium version. Um, and it's only when you step into running a you know a, a, 
good sized team or a brokerage where the business version allows you to do things like have business notebooks that when employees join, you can create their Evernote account and then they have access to these business notebooks. So it kind of becomes a repository for you know information for the entire brokerage, which is very cool at that level. Um, yeah, did yeah, you share features? It's great. Could you actually speak a little bit more about the business version, Jack? Because as you know, you and I just had our first conversation about this yep. this week. Um, yep. This is actually new to me. I've not used it before, so I know you know more about it than I do. But what are the main reasons that anyone would even consider the business version? Well, the the business version is a is a is a it's like a super premium version of Evernote. It uses the same Evernote client, so you use all the same you use the same tool. But what it does is it allows you to create, like if you have, if you're running a brokerage and people already have Evernote accounts, when they join your brokerage or your company, you can add them to your business Evernote and then immediately they get access to all of the shared notebooks that are relevant for the business. So you could have, you know, all of your, you know, all of the documents that, you know, your agents would need to get access to. You could have a, even have like a, a, a notebook that would have all of your, you know, frequently asked questions or documentation about how to use everything in your business. So it, it creates a kind of a, uh, an environment that, you know, in the past people have done with intranets or wikis or other tools, the other documentation tools. So it, it, it just creates a bigger um, set of functionality for people to step into if they have a lot of information that they want to share with a group. So instead of having to go to every single notebook that you have that you want your team to have access to, you can just add them to the business Evernote and they get access to all of that. And so that, that's why that's why to do that. And then beyond that, you know, we're talking to Evernote about how to make the business version a really great fit for real estate because they're still it's such a new product that they're trying to figure out how that's going to work and what you know what areas where it's going to provide the most value. So I see it could provide a lot of value in terms of things like broker file review or creating some process around it where it would feed back into um, some sort of process tool. But that that's coming. That's not anything that exists right now. So and that's a thank you for that extended explanation and I totally get the part about rather than going through and having to uh, manage access to each individual notebook you have for the exact population of people who should have access to it. You can take this core of notebooks that are you know are going to apply to everyone and manage them in that way so that anybody coming into the business, perfect example would be like HR policies, something like that. Um, so that makes perfect sense. What's the cost of the business version? You know, um, I actually don't really know because we were a beta tester for it, and so you know, we they they said they, they were free access. It. They gave us access. They gave us well, we're Evernote ambassadors, and and I don't know. I, I haven't engaged with their sales team. I think they're really still feeling out that version of how that's going to work and how to price it for different gotcha. verticals. So, um, you know, that's the that that's the situation with the business version. Is it? More coming on that. Well, we have really mastered it. I think we'll produce something. We may have some more kind of thinking about how to apply it in the real estate business. But we just love the premium version and the free version so much that there's lots to do there. So, yeah, and, it's, and it really is a great. I mean, it's exciting product. So many different levels, all the way from just the most basic foundational organizational keeping track of. You know, where I have found it invaluable is something like uh, I bought a new product the other day because you recommended it to me called Clarify. And you know, yep. you get a serial number that gets emailed to you, and how often do we lose that information? So I just took the email that they sent to me once I bought the product, and I, I sent it into my email address, my Evernote email address, and then I just put a tag that says clarify. So now I know if I ever move to a new machine and I need to you know, reinstall, I've got that licensing information, I'll always have access to it, I'll always know right where to go to get it, and it's just you know, from that tiny level all the way up to scaling up to the business level, it's just an amazing product. It just is. Yep. So um, th another question is, you know, people want to know, you, you've got a different view of your notebooks than what some people see on their Evernotes. And there are a bunch of view options that I think are, are really interesting in the Evernote to play with that give you different ways of controlling the layout of the notes and the notebooks. Can we play around with those for a minute just so people can see? Here's all the different, because I, I personally use a different view than you use, Michael. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I, I use several different views. So yes, example of the view, 
Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, do right I'll do that right cool. now. I'll do that right now. So basically, cool. we have, I believe it's four view options. Yes, it's four. Um, so we can sort um, using, or we can look using what's called the card view, which looks like this. So this is interest and where uh, instead of getting the vertical, or pardon me, the horizontal, like rectangle view, you get this. The next view is expanded card view, which is really like Pinterest. It's just a whole slew of these little squares. And because this is a brand new uh, 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 profile for me, I haven't populated it yet. My, my you know, is huge, but this brand new, it's why you see so few uh, items. Another view is the one that you stub that I was already using, which is called the snippet view. This is what I use. I just like this view for some reason. And then finally, we have a pure list view, which almost reminds me email. Um, you know, where you've got this list like this, and as you scroll up and down, the notes at the bottom change to match whatever you're choosing, of course. So those are your view options within notes. And then also, let's take a quick look at notebooks. We can also sort notebooks several different ways. Uh, well, one is we can choose a different view of that. So we can use that view, which is, I believe, what everybody at Good Life Team uses. Is that the view you prefer? You know, I like, actually, your screen is slowed down there for me. OK. Yeah, see, I prefer the list books. I think it's, or I think it's the stack and stack view is, is, I like that view better, the one you're showing right now. I think is more. This is, easy. yeah, this is what I use. Yeah, but the but the other view is a little prettier and might make sense, more sense to some people. I mean, I I don't know that there's any there's no right or wrong here. Um, you I'll know where they the got this? Out. No, where did they get that? You know where? Well, I'm pretty sure they got. Have you ever used Penultimate? Mm, I have not. Penultimate is a um, is a digital note taking app. Um, when I say note taking, I mean like by hand. So you write on the iPad with a stylus. And I have used every, you name a note-taking app on the iPad, I have purchased it and used it. Penultimate was the first one I tried, and their presentation was exactly like this. As you may know, Evernote purchased Penultimate. And mm -hmm. so I think they got the idea from that. But uh, I just found that interesting as to how they changed it. Also, Jack, let me add real quickly, if we go back to the notebook view, we can also sort the notebooks um, by owner, which is what we're looking at now, by name, by count. This is a good way to find, you know, if you if you constantly use some notebook that has a ton of notes in it, you can find it that way quickly. And then you can also sort by updated, so it's a chronology of the most, most frequently or the most recently updated. Mm -hmm. Sorry to interrupt you. Oh, no, that's that's great. That, that those are I actually don't I hadn't used the the count before and that's a, I hadn't thought about that that's a really handy feature if you have a note you have notebooks that you have a lot of stuff in um, that's a nice segue to uh, to the next question a person asked well how many notebooks presentations on notebooks and we've actually run in we've run into this so I thought this is a good topic for us to, to talk to well, we just ran into it in fact we just ran into it this week um, I don't recall the number was it two fifth it's two two fifty, yeah. You can have up to two hundred fifty notebooks, and um, but this is a nice segue to a bunch of people have asked questions about: Can I export notebooks? Can I, you know, what what happens if I want to take them out or archive them or things like that? So, can you talk to us a little bit about archiving? Um, actually, Jack, I can't. Okay. <laughs> I honestly don't know Fair the enough. answer to that. Do you? Fair enough. Well, I know there's. I know that you can do. Yeah, no, that's totally fair. In the version I have, I know that you can, um, and I'm on the same. I'm on the Mac, so I'm on a version just like yours. I know that um, when you get at the at the notebook level, I don't see a way to archive a notebook. So I don't see a way to archive the notebook. But at the if you go in and you're at the note level, uh, I do see that you can export. You can export notes in a notebook. And um, I also see that you can um, export multiple notes. So you can go into a notebook and export everything out of it. Now, I do know that when um, Gary talks about how he uses, the, uh, uses Evernote in our iPad for Real Estate program, that he talks about when he archives transactions, that he'll export all of the notes from an Evernote uh, notebook and then put them in our, you know, put them on our, our you know, cloud storage, which is our, where we back everything up to. And so then that's a way, if you want to permanently um, 
archive something out of Evernote, that would be the way to do it right now, is to go into the notebook, select everything in the notebook, and archive it. And there you've got an Evernote XML format. That means you can get it back in and out. Um, but I think you have a, you can export as a PDF, right? Do you get that as an option? Or HTML? No, I, HTML, HTML. HTML, yeah. So, but either one of those would allow you to um, work around the 250 notebook limit and all just wanted to get your files out uh, and you know not have them in your note in your Evernote because you're not you know they're old or you're not using them. Uh, that would be the way to to, uh, to do that process. Um, and if you hit that 250 limit, that would in Evernote about the 250 folder limit. Uh, I haven't. It's interesting that only a lot of people on Evernote for you know quite a while now. So I think what that tells me is that um, you know people are not creating that many notebooks generally, that that's a little unusual. I don't think that happens all the time. Well, I don't know if I agree with you, Jack, because I'll tell you why. I, I think what's happened is that it's taken, because of the age of Evernote, which, you know, how old it does it feel to you? I'm not asking you how old it really is, but how, how long have you been using it? Serious question, how long have you been using it? Uh, since 2005, I think, I, uh, maybe what? 2006. Yeah, no, I'm an oh old. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm an old, okay. uh, old, old Evernote user. I've had it for a long time. All right, I'll, I'll look well, right you're, now. I'll, look, I'll find my oldest note in my notebook and tell you how old it is. Okay, well, you were way, way earlier, way earlier of an adopter than I am. I've been probably using it for four years, but the point I was trying to make is that. Um, if you think about a, a real estate agent, the number one notebook going to be creating most is for a client. And this gentleman who had the question in our Good Lifer group this past week that we're making reference to here, who hit this 250 limit, um, from the comment he made in the group, I'm definitely assuming he hit that limit because he had, you know, let's say 220 clients or 200 clients or whatever the number was, allowing for, you know, notebooks for other things. But the point is, it would take an agent a few years to get to that client if they were adding a notebook for every client. Right. So so I, that's what's happening, is that people yeah. are who are adopting it, they're, and they're creating a notebook for every client, and they're hitting that wall. I see a real problem for our industry with Evernote, and it's just this one point, which is we definitely need to talk to those people, which I know you're already doing, but yep, to try to get that changed because it, it yep the the right structuring of this is to have an individual notebook for every client, and if you yeah. can't do that, you know then that creates a problem for for the power user who's got a lot of clients. Um, so I hope we can yep. get that resolved. Yeah, I I, be I believe so. Evernote. The good thing about the relationship we've developed with Evernote is that you know, we have been able to give them a lot of feedback and that they've been very responsive to it. And the other piece is the, the business version of Evernote, I believe they intend to, that's where they intend to really take limits off. So that is, that's their intention is to have that be the super, like the superpower user version of Evernote where there are just no limitations, no anything. So I, I'm, I'm anticipating that kind of a change with that, um, is, you know, when, when they're a little bit further along with the, the business Ever, Evernote. Um, Okay, so can you explain just real quick? Because there's a bunch of people asking about can you, um, how do you, you know, how do you work with notebooks inside of notebooks? And I know you talked about stacks, um, but you know, I'm getting this similar question: Can you create sub notebooks? How do you create a notebook stack? How does that all work? Yeah. So if we go back to the notebook view, and again, um, I'll repeat what I said earlier, which is the white rectangles are notebook stacks. The gray rectangles are individual notebooks, so that's something to get right away. Uh, and it's nice because visually it presents itself in a way that you know you grasp that quickly. So um, uh, the the analogy that I used at the start of the, the webinar of you know a notebook is like a Manila folder. You put sheets of paper in the Manila folder. The sheets of paper represent notes. Uh, the notebook stacks represent collections of Manila folders, if you will. So to me, this is the this is the perfect example of, of uh, or the best answer to that question is, you know, just like you would in real life. I have a I have a um, a uh, or drawer notebook or pardon me file drawer next to me, and I have it separated by you know buyers, sellers, etc. Same deal here. So you're taking all of your buyers notebooks for them, and you're putting them in a stack of those notebooks called buyers, where I'm no um, 
where I now have highlighted. So I, I don't know if that answers the question or not. It's just really for organizational purposes. I mean, you really wouldn't need to include these stacks if you didn't want to. You could also just go in here and, and rename a notebook and call this, for example, you could rename this as buyer dash Karen Johnson. And over time, as you create more of these notebooks, and if you view them alphabetically, which most people would, they would all present in that fashion. I just think it's easier to use the stacks. And another thing I'll point out is this. Um, if you click on an individual note, as I'm doing now, I'm clicking on this one called Test for Evernote Training. If I click on that, I can add that to a stack, as you see. Just like as yeah. the, the example we saw earlier, you can you yep. copy something directly. So that works like that, too. So um, you can real quickly and easily, or to me, the easiest way to do this is drag. Drag and drop. To me, there's nothing easier than dragging and dropping. Definitely, definitely. So, um, gosh, wow, a lot, a lot of questions. So, this is a more sophisticated question that is related. You have multiple transactions with one client. Would you use the same notebook? And I, I know how I want to answer that. I'm curious how you would answer that. Um, uh, if I wasn't concerned about 250 notebook limitation, I would absolutely keep those things distinct and separate, just like I do with paper files. I would never commingle documents, physical documents, um, among a single file. I would always have separate files for separate transactions. And if you saw the way I run my real estate business, I mean a separate folder for you know when I get a new buyer and I'm just showing them properties, I'm collecting those listings in a physical file. This is before Evernote, of course. Um, and then once they find the home I'm going to make an offer on, I did you know I set aside that original folder, create a new folder which is just about that transaction, and then I I keep that same folder from contract to close, and then I archive that. So I do the same thing conceptually using Evernote. So how would you answer the question? Yeah, I mean, I, I I don't think I have a different answer really. I think yours is totally totally fine. Um, I had one person ask to see the the mechanics of creating the notebook stack just one more time because if there's a little confusion about how you actually turned a note a notebook into a stack. Okay. Um, well, the way I've seen other people do it most frequently is now assuming you're starting from which is hard to do because you can see what I already have. But if you drag a note, any note, on top of another note, so why am I allowed to do this? Any notebook. Yes, on pardon, top of another pardon me, yeah. pardon me, pardon me. Yes, notebook. I apologize. If you drag any notebook on top of another notebook, which I'm about to do, so I'm going to take this one called Test for Evernote Training, and I'm going to take this one called Good Michael Notebook, and I'm going to drag them. I'm going to drag one on top of the other. Now, if you uh -huh. notice. It changed the name of those combined entities into notebook stack. It's just a generic renaming. I now go and click on that notebook stack, and I read this as, you know, example of stack. Click, double click it, and there you go. It includes the original notebook, Good Michael's notebook you see right here, and then it's carrying over to the next column, but it's the same stack, and the other one is called Test for Evernote Training. So I combined those two notebooks, dragged one on top of the other, and that created the opportunity to create a stack, and then I just renamed it. So yep. I'm just dragging and dropping again. Okay, so new topic, totally different. Um, we haven't talked at all about tags in terms of tagging. It's, it's a feature in Evernote on a note that allows you, you have notebooks which are great for organizing things into groups of things, but um, talk to us a little bit about tags. Do you use them? How do you sure. use them? Let me answer the question visually. I'm now going to switch over to my real, um, my real Evernote account. The one we've been in time mm -hmm. is um, the one for that demo. we're using just for yeah demo purpose. So I'm now going to show you my actual my actual account. So here we are. And remember I mentioned earlier um, I, that I wasn't going to talk about everything in this black column on the left. 
one yeah. of the options we have here is tag. So I'm going to click on that, and here's how many tags I have. Mm -hmm. A bunch. Wow. So, so and again, you can you can sort these by name by note count. So what is you know what tags have I used the most? VPA, online rotation, agent reboot, Facebook, etc. And so I can click on let's click on this um, Swanapool technology report. You see when I did that, you see how that blue um, arrow up in the upper right corner pops up? Gives me an option. I can let all the notes that include that tag. So here they are. And so I can go through it. This is just magic because I am a yeah. tag a hall. So, you know, I can't tell you how many times I have, you know, found something obscure from long ago because I tagged it properly. And uh, I, I am really an advocate of tagging. I think you should, you know, if you tag properly, you almost don't need notebooks. Now, I wouldn't advocate that, but I'm saying you, you could do that. Because with pro proper tagging structure, you're in effect creating a notebook because when you click on the tag, it serves up all the notes that are tagged that way. And this is basically kind of like a notebook, mm -hmm. if you follow yep. the logic of that. Yep. Yeah, I think the biggest difference between tags and notebooks, and this is, a, this is subtle, but for those of you that, that do manage a lot of notebooks or a lot of content in Evernote, it's important. A note can only live in one notebook, but you can tag it a million different ways. Oh, point. Yeah, so that's the major, that's the fundamental difference between notebooks and tags. And because you can do lots of tags, you know, you could take, and, and here's just some applications. So say you wanted to, you know, you have your individual transaction notebooks, right, for each of your clients. Maybe you want to pull up all of the investor notes related to all the investor transactions you did. So you just tag any note that's related to an investment purchase with the tag investor or investing, right? And then you have instant access to everything across all transactions you've done that uh, is related to investing or an investor, right? Um, there are some, yeah, there's some great ways. I've seen people use tags to organize statuses for transactions. So you can do things like tag, you know, all of your, so say you're using the contract to close checklist, you can tag all of the contract to close checklist with each transaction with a status of, with a tag called, you know, active or closed or pending or whatever you want to determine. And then you can very easily pull up all of the transact contract to close templates that you have of your clients with the tag that is labeled according to this. If you want to see everything that's pending or closed or you know whatever status is reported to you. And I, I have seen that and we've done a little bit of that. So in that way you can build a system and you just have to you just change out the tag when you move from one status to another. Yep. And so so it's 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 a very powerful feature. It's a little more advanced, but once you're in there I think it, it creates a lot of uh, opportunity to build your own systems uh, out of that. Absolutely, and I think that example you gave is the best one I can think of because, you know, where where does a highly successful realtor or real estate team spend a huge chunk of their time or should spend a huge chunk of their time is in managing the contract to close process. So imagine using tags for just that. So you're just clicking on show me all the contract to close status transactions I have and can, can you picture your admin person coming in the morning that's the first thing they do. They look at all the notes that are open, contract to close notes, and they go through and they just work on the stuff that's needing to be done. I mean, it's it's that simple. And I think that's a really powerful example and application yep. of what this stuff can do. Yep. Can you just show real quick how to tag a note, just so people know? Absolutely. So I got that. I got that question. So, um, well, I don't have any notes here, so I'm going to create one for Joe Smith. And you'll notice up here it says click to add tags. So you just click and let's uh, do exactly what we just said. We'll create one called contract close. And as soon as it changes the color and creates that, you know, that rounded edge rectangle indicating that it's saved that um, tag. So now if you go into tags, tags in the back column on well, the left. Well, wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's pretend. Go back to that note. Well, you, we'll go, just go back to that note and we'll show because I want to demonstrate the other the cool of tags. We have lots of them. 
So, uh, so to also tag that, let's say that's an investor transaction. So tag it as investor. Okay, great. So now you've got both. Yep. And I don't think there's any limit. So, I mean, granted, yeah. there's a logical limit, but, you know, I've, I have a five tags. You know, I've got a bunch that have four, five, six tags, definitely. And again, now that I've added those two, we go down into the tags view and we see I've got one called um, contract to close and I've got one called investor, which I just created. Got and it. one called template. And you can create tags at this level too. So you can create them independent of notes. You can just, and in anticipation of using them, you can, you know, create them. So, uh, so I've got somebody uh, who mentioned that Evernote has been around. Uh, and so I have my oldest note is from 2000, December of 2006. Actually, the history of Evernote is it came, it was a product before it was a company. And uh, there are some of us, some true old timers, that are on the, two, uh, they've been on since 2006. So, but thank you, Roland. Yeah, actually, Jack, a actually, Jack, you a once in a lifetime opportunity right there to lead us to believe that you are capable of time travel. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it before, I'll do it again. I'm going to go back to earlier in the hour and fix a mistake I made. So, <laughs> Jack Miller used Evernote two years before it existed. <laughs> That's too funny. So, um, and I do have a couple of people want to know, we're going to run, uh, we're going to close out the webinar at 3.30 Central, 4.30 Eastern Time, uh, just so anybody that's, that's checking, uh, that, that that's the plan. So, um, gosh, so tagging is a huge topic. We did get a lot of questions about tagging. That's great. Uh, we did have Jeff McIntyre said, uh, the iPad version doesn't allow for creation of notebook stacks. I believe that's correct. Um, I'm like Michael, I'm pri I primarily use the iPad version for consumption and some note taking. I usually don't manage all of my notebooks uh, on the iPad version just because it's easier to do it on the desktop version. Uh, but I believe that's correct. I don't think you can create the stacks. I do, you can view them because I have notebooks in stacks um, that I view on my iPad. So I, I think you can view them, but I think he's right. That they're, I'm not aware of how to create them. Maybe there is. That'd be a good question for Gary. So. Yeah, in fact, um, bear with me for a second, Jack, because I've picked up my iPad and I'm looking at it now. And um, uh, yes, you can view your stacks. And the stacks are, they physically appear. This is cool. Um, they physically appear. I'm looking at the view that, um, that I told you was uh, copied from Penultima, the one that shows like a physical notebook as opposed to the rectangles. Yeah, I'm talking about. Um, yep. So when it presents those on the iPad, the stacks have a white wrapper around the notebook physically. And they say, for example, uh, it's, showing, it's showing the stacks. Uh, so I, the first one, you know, the one I showed you on, on the desktop view, which was called 1-prospects, who dash buyers etc it's showing how many notebooks are within that stack. So the first one says 1-prospects, it has one notebook. Two buyers has five notebooks. So I'm going to open that up on my iPad, and it presents all five of those notebooks. So it does demonstrate or physically display the, the notebook stacks and the notebooks within. But uh, if this gentleman says you can't create them, I certainly believe it. Yeah, yeah. But you can and definitely I, I see them. Yeah, you can definitely see them. And I, I, I know that. Like I said, I use it. On, I use it for for getting into those uh, notebook stacks. So. Good reason to use both the desktop version and the iPad version together is that it gives you better management control with the stacks. Now, I for a long time didn't use stacks. I just used I just had a ton of notebook. So the stacks was kind Same of with new. Me. Yeah, it was kind of a new. Like when they added stacks, it probably had been around for a year before I discovered how to use it, and then it became really useful. So, um, so absolutely. Well, one one complaint that I've heard uh, consistently from people over time. And this is another change that I would hope that maybe Evernote would address is that, you know, here's the question as it's usually posed. How many different levels down can I go? Meaning, you've got a stack, you've got a notebook within that. Can I put a notebook within that notebook? And the answer is no. All you can do is stack notebook, you know, uh, two levels. And what would really be awesome is if you could treat it down infinitely. Mm -hmm. If you if that makes if that makes any sense. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. But on the other hand, you're right. As you already said, you can use stacks at all for a while, and you you use yeah. it just fine. Tagging just makes fine. that. Yeah. Yeah. Tagging, and also we didn't talk about search. We haven't even talked about search. I meaning just we keyword search. search. Yeah. Yeah. Just plain <laughs> keyword search. I use that constantly. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's it may be it might be the best feature of Evernote actually, and uh, we just kind of take it for granted. Uh, I I didn't even use notebooks for a long time because the search was so was so powerful. So yeah. Yeah, in fact, I want to show you a little trick here, Jake. This is one of my favorite um, one of my favorite illustrations I can give you within uh, within Evernote. So I'm back in my profile, and I'm going to search the word Deborah. My good friend, who we had a great time with in San Francisco, you and I, just last week, and I want to show you what we find when we search the word Deborah. How about that? That's awesome. That's a post-it. Wow. That is that a post-it. Awesome. That. Yeah. Um, and and uh, I in fact that you know where I used this, Jack. It was the very first webinar I did with you guys. Um, remember, I did an Evernote webinar a couple of years ago. I do, and I, do. I used this illustration because Deborah was the one who taught me this. And so, um, if you look at the actual, let me drag it back. If you look at the actual note that this sits inside, which is this, this is a photo that I took of a Post-it. And yeah. my handwriting is pretty here, but it isn't perfect. And I could give you a lot of other illustrations where it has found fairly sloppy handwriting of mine. This is the OCR. It's magic. Yeah, that that is, that may be one of the most wickedly cool features of Evernote is that that whole photo. Because I've used, you know, where I've used that is this is this is just outside. I don't know, no matter whether you're in real estate or not. But I take I'll take photos of receipts and I'll take photos of um, like when I I get uh, I buy I purchase. I'm going to send send something in for a rebate. I'll take a picture of the box or take a box picture of the serial number, things like that. And then you can search for stuff like that, which is really oh, really yeah. cool, really cool. Same Absolutely. Thing with invo invoices. We we did have a question here about can you scan things in Evernote? I use that all the time. I scan Evernote um, using a, I have a a, a, a multifunction scanner, and I will scan. It's an Epson, and I just scan into Evernote, and then it OCRs the document and I'm able to search and um, find things within the documents that I've scanned, which is just killer. And uh, that's something, again, that's one of those features that's been there for a while that I, you know, it's like I just kind of take it for granted and don't even think about it. So Yeah, I have I have, uh, I have the ScanSnap S1500M right next to me right now. And I mean, I am a scanaholic. When I first got this scanner, which is maybe eight months ago, I spent, no lie, like a solid week, almost nonstop, of just scanning everything I could scan. It was like I became addicted to it for exactly the reason that you're suggesting, which is you can find everything and you just unload. I mean, it's weird. I know people are going to think I'm exaggerating this, but it was like it was it was a significant event in my life to get rid of 100 pounds of paper, which was scattered around my office and in my basement and at my regular office. I was just bringing home boxes of stuff and scanning and then shredding them. And my physical office where I'm sitting in right now, which is in my home, is half dense with stuff as it was before I got that scanner. I love that scanner. It's so cool. And it scans directly into Evernote. So there's no steps. It's just scan and there it is. It just instantly appears. It's very cool. Um, I wish, do you have a scanner hooked up? Because I, I would that would be a cool thing to show. <laughs> well, we only I got, do. We only got another. We only got another six. I do. Seconds, so, can you pull that off in sixty seconds? Can you show people a scan? <laughs> um, let's see. I'm, I'm literally running in my office. All right. So I'm pressing <laughs> scan. I'm pressing. It, see it? It's scanning. See it? See the dialog box That's that popped really open? Really cool. And boom. And boom, it's done. So that's wow. how long it. Okay, wait a minute. It's it's not letting me it's drag things across screens. Uh, hang on, it'll be here in a second. Oh, it's in your you, it. In your it's uh, it not it's not letting me um, drag across for some reason. Mm. But to me, it's here. It's on my other yeah. screen. I just can't get it across. I don't, I don't know what's going on here, but it's stuck. But yeah, yeah it, how long did that take? It took uh, five seconds, uh, seven five seconds. seconds. 
five seconds. It's very cool. Here very it cool. comes. Here it comes. Bear with me. All right. We have to All right. show people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you go ahead and start signing off, Jack, while, while this is Yeah, okay. Is. Well, great. Hey, so everybody, thank you all for coming today. It was great um, to see the interest in Evernote. I, we still have 550 people on this webinar, so I kind of, I, you know, I hate to have to shut it down, but we had blocked an hour and then decided to run a little bit over because there were so many questions. And that just tells me how strong the interest is there is in moving to digital and using tools like Evernote to streamline your business.